This is everything you need to know about fixed wing LiDAR drones and how they compare to multi-rotor LiDAR drones. Let's dive in deep and find all the nuances and educate you so you know everything there is to know and you can be an expert too. Let's jump in. So last week, Wingtra announced they launched a new groundbreaking LiDAR drone solution. They have a new LiDAR payload for their fixed wing drone. This is really awesome, but what does it really mean for you? And I want to teach you all about the nuances of what a fixed wing versus a multi-rotor drone setup will get you and what to expect independent of the platform. This will be true for the Wingtra or any other fixed wing drone and mostly true for all the multi-rotors as well. Now, to give a little credibility to this argument, let me share with you some about my past. I've actually integrated LiDARs and fixed wing drones for a long time. I actually think I was one of the first people to ever do it. So here is actually me back in 2014 flying fixed wing drones. And this is kind of a little bit about my history getting into this. So this was a very large drone system, pneumatic air launch tube, but that later got transitioned into different payloads, uh, different platforms that did vertical takeoff and landing. This was like the early days. But then I got into integrating some of the Phoenix LiDAR payloads into the JOUAV VTOL aircraft and flying those. Uh, went to Romania, flew them. This is my, one of my favorite clips right here though. Let's just, just watch this. Strapped a GoPro to it. Really freaking cool angle. Yeah, this was a blast uh, to do, but every single fixed wing suffered from very similar issues with the data from the LiDAR systems. And that's really what I wanna get into today. So in this video, I'm gonna break down step one. I'm gonna talk a little bit about LiDAR in general so we can get all in the same playing field. And then I'm gonna go step by step into the differences between the fixed wing and a multi-rotor for collecting good LiDAR data. So let's jump into that right now. So step one, uh, LiDAR. LiDAR is, for the most part, a line scanner. There's some new scanners coming out, so I want you guys to understand how the data is being captured. So it is actually shooting down a, a, you know, a line you know, coming down and you push forward as you fly and you're sweeping out covering the land. So I can open this data set really quick and we can see here is a data set where you're flying this lawnmower pattern back and forth. And if I go to the GPS time, we can actually see how it was flown. You see that it's just pushing across and building the 3D model as it flies. And this is gonna be important because it's going to affect the quality of the data in different scenarios. So we're gonna get it to that. So key point here is it's a line scanner. Now, if we look at this, we can see if it's straight onto us, that triangle is the full width of the triangle, full lines hitting the ground. But on the right-hand side, let's just say the airplane was flying tip over tip, you know, just going straight sideways, crabbing at us. We would just look, see a very narrow line. So if we wanted to do overlap, for the straight on case, the overlap would be, you know, the largest flight width. So if you get 0% overlap, you can fly maximum far away whenever you're perfectly perpendicular to us. So right here is going to be the distance from the center to the center. That distance right there will be maximized at this configuration where it's straight on at you. Now, if it is the worst case scenario and it was just doing tip over tip, you know, you would have to fly really close, you know, all those lines in order to get enough coverage to get overlap. So I hope you can kind of see what I'm saying there. Uh, so widest, cause it's I mean, straight at me and then narrowest, cause you know, straight tip over tip. And you know, it's not a full, like it's not a camera and the camera has two different planes. We only have this line scanner. This is gonna be important later. The other big thing to know is that flight height and flight speed. So typically with LiDAR data, the higher or the farther you are away from the object you're trying to measure, the more noisy the data is. So just like a camera and you have pixels, if I'm really close to an object and take a photo of it, you know, I'm gonna get really high resolution of that object. But if I you know, look out my window over here and take a photo of a car a mile away, well, the number of pixels that car's gonna occupy will be very small. So the resolution's gonna be very low. Very similar analogy with the LiDAR data. Further away, the more fuzzy it is. Closer it is, the more accurate it is. Um, and then we have the flight speed. 
So it's constantly sending out a number of laser pulses. Beep, 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 beep. And if you fly really fast, vroom, you know, then it's gonna be like pulse, pulse, pulse. But if you fly really slow, it'll be do, 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 you know, so you'll get a lot more points in the ground. So now we understand the line scanner, the flight height, and the flight speed. Now let's jump into how does all this play into effect when we're talking about a fixed wing drone? And how do we compare that and contrast that to a multi-rotor? So let's get into a few scenarios here. Here's one scenario. So now we have this typical lawnmower pattern right here going down and back. So that's just like right here. We can see we flew this lawnmower pattern in order to cover all the land there. So this is exactly what I'm depicting here. Now, in this scenario, the wind is flying going right to the right. So just from left to right, we have a wind going across breeze, we call it. So what's gonna happen? In order for the fixed wing uh, aircraft to maintain wind over its, <laughs> over its airfoils, its wings, to maintain lift and fly, it's gonna have to do what's called a windcock. It's going to crab and it's going to windcock into the wind. So actually, in order to fly down like this, the airplane will look something like this. It's gonna point into the direction of the wind and also a little bit downwind in order to go that direction. So it will fly like this down and as it turns around, it will need to fly like this to come up the line here. See what I'm saying? So what happens here is that the width of the visible area from that line scanner is going to go like this. So we're gonna to to shrink the flight lines down in order to get the overlap. So based on what I'm saying is the overlap can be a little unpredictable if you have any crosswind. So typically when you're training someone to make a mission plan for a fixed wing drone, you say, the first thing you say is always fly into the wind and down the wind. We're gonna to get to that case next, but I wanna contrast that with the multi-rotor. The multi-rotor is actually able to stay pretty much straight on the whole time. So even if there's a cross breeze, those propellers will lock it in and keep it straight on the whole time. And so we will always have that full width, very easy to control that overlap then. Not a lot of worry about the overlap. Now, if we say, okay, well, let's fly it, you know, straight into the wind and straight downwind. Now we run into another issue. If there is wind, all that matters for a fixed wing drone is we must maintain air speed, not ground speed. It's two different things. So the air speed will be how fast I'm flying with respect to the wind. So if the wind is blowing 10 miles per hour, and I need to maintain, to say randomly, 15 mile per hour airspeed, that means my ground speed would be 10 plus 15, 25 miles per hour. So what ends up happening is when you're going downwind, you're gonna fly real fast, just like that. And then when you turn around and come upwind, you're gonna kind of slog and go real slow upwind because it's just, it's your speed plus or minus the wind speed. So. I'm gonna fly pretty slow with respect to the ground. And the ground's all that we care about because that's the data that we're getting. So you're gonna get really sparse data whenever you fly downwind because you're gonna go really fast. And like I said, the dit, 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 dit. So that's gonna dit, 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 space out the data and be sparse. And then when you fly upwind, you're gonna fly really slow and get really dense data. So that just will happen. Some zebra striping will happen in your data sets if there's any wind and you're flying downwind and upwind. In contrast, the multi-rotor, no problem. It's gonna maintain its ground speed no matter what. You know, you're gonna be able to basically, it's gonna control for the GPS and control the ground speed because it's gonna basically be saying, I wanna go this many meters per second with respect to GPS, not with respect to the external wind speed. Big difference. So the point being, you fly down and up into the wind, you're gonna go fast then slow. 
and that's going to affect your point density. If you have a cross breeze, you're going to crab and that your overlaps will change because before you were, you know, straight on, but now if we're flying tip over tip, you know, it's just that little sliver of data. So you have to fly closer and closer flight lines to get the same overlap. So both those things happen. That's a big thing you need to be aware about. I found it a big problem whenever I was doing the fixed wing LiDAR stuff. It's kind of hard, um, uncertain. Okay, so I drove that point home. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Terrain following. Again, we're talking about the ground speed with now terrain. So what we're going to find out is whenever a fixed wing goes up, it's ascending, the ascent rate, it will actually slow down. As we go up, we slow down. And as we come over and go down, we'll speed up. So you go up and you're going slow because you're climbing. It makes logical sense, right? And then it's just like a roller coaster, right? As you point that nose down of that aircraft, it's going to gain speed. This always happens. You know, you're gonna when you point the nose down, you gain speed. So again, you'll get dense data on the way up and then sparse data on the way down. Multi-rotor, on the other hand, it will just climb at the same speed and then it will descend at the same speed. So lots of control, a lot of control over that ground speed with the multi-rotor. There's another issue that rises up too. So even if it's not just a, a big hill and a big downhill, say it's a bunch of little hills like this, there's a max ascent rate and a max descent rate and you can't really control that it's going to tuck down in every little ups and downs. So if we come back over to this data set, we can see, you know, in order to maintain the uh, AGL, the, you know, basically the height above the ground level, we had to fly up like this in the hump there. And then we had to arch over and then come down. So the tolerances for sticking to that ground were, were pretty tight. You know, we had to stay tight to those tolerances. Now, whenever you're flying a fixed wing, you know, there's only so much you can do and so much time to react, you know? So it's oftentimes, so a situation like this, it might go up and just kind of smooth over all of these bumps and hills. So that means right here, you're gonna be much higher from the ground, much here, you'd be much lower to the ground. So you'd have more accurate data, less accurate data, more accurate data, less accurate data. Whereas the multi-rotor, you'll have very fine control over being able to just slow down and fly a little bit slower and just stay stuck to that terrain model that you're flying from. See what I'm saying there? So that's all to do with the max ascent and descent rate with that fixed wing drone. Obviously the max ascent and descent was infinity. It would go foo, foo, foo. It can, you know, adjust to every single contour there was of the ground, but it's not, and it never will be because <laughs> there's uh, aerodynamics involved and yeah, that it's just not gonna allow for it. Obstacle avoidance. This is a big one. Multi-rotors, like the DJI M350, these guys have cameras and if it sees something, it's gonna stop and just hover or avoid it altogether. Fixed wing drone, you know, you're gonna kaboom right into that thing. If you flight plan it to go into it. Oftentimes this happens, guys. We flight plan these multi-rotors and there is an obstacle. And thank God for these obstacle avoidance because it will just not hit it. Or you have the FPV view and you're watching on the controller and you see this coming like a mile away. And then you just uh, quickly, doo -doo, you know, flip over back and forth and pause the mission. And when you pause in the multi-rotor, you can just loiter. It'll just hover. You can't pause on a fixed wing. It's moving. It must always move. You know, in order to maintain lift, it must move. So that's a little nerve wracking and you gotta, you gotta think ahead a lot more when you're doing mission planning because you need to foresee all of this as an issue. Um, whereas you can be just like a little bit lazier with the multi-rotor, you know, cause like you can just dynamically in situational awareness while it's flying, basically just pause it and then deal with the situation and then keep going. It's much more stressful cause you, you, it's like you're driving on the highway. It's like the movie speed you gotta maintain the speed or else the car blows up. Well, you gotta maintain the speed or else you lose uh, altitude and you hit the ground. So that's, that's something to know about the obstacle avoidance. Similarly, if we got a helicopter coming in here, well, it's pretty easy with the multi-rotor just to pause the mission and then bring it down and just hover lower until that helicopter goes by. 
and then we come back up and we keep flying. Now with the multi-rotor, the only thing you can really do, and I mean, I'll be honest, it's kind of nerve wracking. You can just go into loiter mode. Uh, essentially it draws a big circle and that drone, the drone's just gonna fly in a circle and loiter in that circle. You gotta think about it. It takes like, is, am I going counterclockwise or clockwise when I first initiate the circle? And if I initiate to the, you know, clockwise, I'm gonna go to the right. So just keep that in mind, you know, you gotta think about these things. So definitely a lot more to think about. Now on the pros, uh, oftentimes the fixed wing drones, you get a much longer flight time. So you're able to capture larger areas. Maybe, you know, uh, I think my experience has been that hot swapping batteries for like uh, the DJI M350 or M300 has been pretty easy. And just to keep it going, keep it going in the air. Uh, you know, that's been the best case scenario for me. And then the other thing is once you invest in the fixed wing platform, oftentimes when you buy one of these LiDAR systems, you have a lot of different scenarios you wanna fly in. Maybe you wanna fly lower and slower to get higher accuracy over some, you know, fine detail of like curbs on a road or, you know, fine intricate, you know, a railing or something, you know, whatever you wanna see to capture that data. Now with the fixed wing drone, you're kind of, you're, you're set. You're set at how fast it's flying. Cause that, that speed that's flying is all dependent on the, the area of lift of your wing and your center of mass and how much mass you have. So basically it's how much lift can it generate versus the, the mass holding it down. And you balance those out and it determines, you know, how fast you must be flying to maintain lift. Uh, so those things are what's controlling the lift and your speed. Not so much you just saying, I want to fly at two meters per second this time. I want to fly at 10 this time. You know, you can do all that with the multi-rotor. So I don't know where it does accelerate. And I will give it this right now is that if you have a LiDAR system that's vastly overpowered. So meaning like you have a LiDAR, like a, a really high end Regal system. And this is actually what I ended up integrating with the larger fixed wing drones was these high end LiDAR systems, which have a range, which is very, very far, much further than you're gonna really need. And so, but that would take into account whenever we couldn't do the train following. So that range was there on that laser. So I was kind of, it was overcompensated for that. Um, and also had a much higher points per second rate. So that way, if I was flying really fast, well, it still was enough data. Yes, it would be thicker here or denser here and not as dense here, but at the end of the day, it would be satisfactory um, for the needs that I had to generate a digital service model, digital elevation model. Um, and that being said, some of these other not so overkill LiDARs for the application, they do work for a subset of scenarios. You know, maybe you just need very low accuracy, low density data, and you just need like a rough, you know, look at things. And I'd, I'd say for that, it totally does work. But in my experience, which I have a lot of, uh, that's a lot of money to spend for a small subset of cases, in which case the multi-rotor could still do that as well. And you'd be totally fine just doing a one single hot swap. And that's all good. All right, guys, I just wanted to make another video to you know express my feelings and also express my knowledge so you can learn something about the fixed wing drone LiDAR systems versus the multi-rotor drone LiDAR systems. You can be educated about this topic and know a little bit more about some of the experience I've had. And just, this is just physics, not to do with anyone's particular project product, but this is just how it is. So I hope you learned something out there. If you wanna learn more, and I hope you do, leave some questions down in the comments section below. I'm gonna make a bunch more videos. I'm really going out of my way right now to just like, let's get them all answered. Let's get all the content on the internets so we can all learn together. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something here and uh, I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones. All right, one more thing before you go. This is a message to all the creatives, the innovators out there in this community watching this video right now. If you're as passionate about drone LiDAR, SLAM, data processing, and all the connective tissue of support that we offer and I try providing these videos, we want you to join our team. We're assimilating the best team of the most passionate expertise people out there to join us on a mission to create the best 3D mapping LiDAR technology in the world. So if you think that's you, if you love this content, if you are dedicated and experienced, then reach out to us. Join our team. 
You can always reach us at jobs at rockerbog.com. All right, I'll see you on the next one.